In this video lesson, we're going to expand on the previous lesson in which we talked about the short-run Phillips curve and the trade-off that exists between the inflation rate and the unemployment rate in an economy during a period of time over which wages and prices are relatively inflexible, in other words, during the short run. In this model, we're going to look at the long run, which in macroeconomics is defined as the flexible wage and price period. What we want to know is whether or not there is a trade-off between inflation and unemployment in the long run after wages and prices have had time to adjust to the equilibrium level of aggregate demand in the nation's economy. So you'll notice that our graphs, as we see them here, look just like they did at the end of our previous lesson when we talked about the short-run Phillips curve. In the graph on the left, we've got an economy producing at its full employment level of output with the stable price level equal to PE. We'll assume that at this current equilibrium full employment level, there is an inflation rate of around 2% in the economy and an unemployment rate of just over 4%. In other words, we are at a point on our Phillips curve right here at point A, which will correlate with point A on our aggregate demand, aggregate supply diagram. So as we learned in our previous lesson, anything that increases aggregate demand in the economy will shift the AD curve to the right, causing inflation and an increase in output and employment, therefore a fall in unemployment. An increase in aggregate demand causes a movement along the short-run Phillips curve up and to the left from point A to point B, which corresponds with point B in the graph on the left. Now, in the short run, it is possible for an economy to produce beyond its full employment level of output, as we see in the graph on the left. Because there is some unemployment, even when an economy is producing at its full employment level, an increase in aggregate demand can increase output because, in the short run at least, workers can be hired, firms can increase their output, there will be some inflation in the economy, but due to the excess capacity existing due to frictional and structural unemployment, output can temporarily increase beyond the full employment level. Let's assume, however, that the government takes no action, and following this increase in aggregate demand, inflation persists, and therefore, in the long run, workers begin demanding higher wages. This is what we call the flexible wage period. Over time, in the face of demand pull inflation, workers in the economy will demand higher nominal wages. And as firms are forced to pay workers higher nominal wages, they will be forced to reduce the number of workers that they employ moving the economy back to YFE, its full employment level of output. The higher nominal wage rate in the economy causes cost push inflation and a leftward shift of the short run aggregate supply curve, as we see here, to SRAS1. This economy, in the long run, will always return to its full employment level of output. However, in the long run, inflation will accelerate and will have a new higher price level of P2. What does this mean for the trade-off between inflation and unemployment that we observed in the short run? Let's look at the Phillips curve graph. When aggregate demand initially increased, we moved along the, the short run Phillips curve from point A to point B. However, in the long run, unemployment will return to its natural rate as the economy's output level returns to YFE. Therefore, unemployment will actually go back to just over 4%. However, inflation in the economy will actually accelerate in the long run due to the cost push inflation resulting from higher nominal wages being demanded by workers in this economy. So in fact, the final outcome on our Phillips cur curve diagram will be a move back to the natural rate of unemployment, which will correspond with the higher rate of inflation than what was achieved before the initial increase in aggregate demand. So what we see is that as the short-run aggregate supply curve shifts to the left due to higher nominal wages being demanded by workers now facing higher inflation, the short-run Phillips curve will shift to the right. And there will be a new Phillips curve of PC1, which is to the right of the original Phillips curve. Now, what does this mean for the trade-off between inflation and unemployment that we observed in the short run? Well, as we can see, in the long run, there is no trade-off between inflation and unemployment. If we connect the two dots that we now have, what we end up with is a vertical long-run Phillips curve, which is vertical at the natural rate of unemployment. 
We'll call this the NRU. How do we know that just over 4% is the natural rate? Well, that's because that's the unemployment rate that exists when an economy is producing at its full employment level of national income and output. Due to the flexible nature of wages and prices, in the long run, following an increase in aggregate demand, output will return to its full employment level, therefore unemployment will return to its natural rate. Inflation will be higher following an increase in aggregate demand, assuming the government takes no contractionary action or the central bank takes no contractionary action aimed at reducing aggregate demand back to the original level. Now let's look at what happens if aggregate demand falls in this economy. What if there's a demand efficient recession and consumption and investment decline causing AD to shift to the left as we see here. The decrease in aggregate demand will put downward pressure on prices and the price level will fall from PE to P0 and there will be a fall in output and employment from YFE to Y0. On our short run Phillips curve diagram, this will correspond with the movement down and to the right along the Phillips curve. There will now be lower inflation and higher unemployment. As we see, unemployment will rise to over 5% and inflation will fall to around 1%. In the short run, we have seen a movement along the Phillips curve from point A to point C, which corresponds with point C in our aggregate demand aggregate supply model. Now what will happen in the long run? Let's assume the government takes no expansionary action to try to stimulate aggregate demand and the central bank makes no attempt to increase the money supply to stimulate aggregate demand. Assuming aggregate demand remains weak, in the long run we must assume that due to the high and persistent unemployment in this economy, wages will begin to fall. Workers will have no more bargaining power for wages. Firms will be able to offer workers lower and lower nominal wages. Over time, therefore, they will begin hiring more workers, and output should begin to move back to its full employment level. Now, this will only occur if wages fall. Therefore, a fall in nominal wages will cause short run aggregate supply to shift outwards to SRAS2, which corresponds with an increase in output and a decrease in the price level. In the long run, in other words, the inflation rate will be even lower, we'll call this P3, and equilibrium employment and output will return to its full employment level. On the Phillips curve diagram, what we see, of course, is that in the long run, there is no trade-off between inflation and unemployment. Following the fall in aggregate demand, we now see an inflation rate of 0%, but unemployment has returned once again to the natural rate of just over 4%. So, looking at all the evidence here, an increase in aggregate demand in the short run causes a movement along the short run Phillips curve. But following all long run adjustments that occur, output should always return to the full employment level. Therefore, unemployment will always return to the natural rate of unemployment. Inflation may rise or fall depending on the level of aggregate demand in the economy, but unemployment will always remain at its natural rate. Therefore, looking at our Phillips curve on the right, what we end up with is a vertical long run Phillips curve which is vertical at the natural rate of unemployment. So we'll call this the LRPC for the long run Phillips curve. Now what is the relationship between the long run Phillips curve and the long run aggregate supply curve? Predictably it's not unlike the relationship between the short run Phillips curve and the short run aggregate supply curve. If something were to occur to shift the long run aggregate supply curve to the right for example, in the long run, a nation's education system can be improved. The skills of its workers can be improved. The technology and the productivity of the nation's workers can be improved. These sorts of things will shift long-run aggregate supply to the right, which would correspond with the leftward shift of the long-run Phillips curve. Economic growth and improvements in human capital or productivity will cause a greater level of output and employment in the aggregate demand aggregate supply model and could correspond with the lower level of its natural rate of unemployment in the long run Phillips curve diagram. So increases in productivity, increases in technology or capital, or better education for the nation's workers can improve the long run employment outcomes for the nation and reduce the long run level of unemployment in the economy, in other words, the natural rate.
So there you have the lesson on the long run Phillips curve. You'll notice that it's simply a vertical line above the natural rate of unemployment in the economy, which teaches us that despite the level of aggregate demand in a nation's economy, output will always be, in the long run, equal to the full employment level of output due to the flexible nature of wages and prices. Following an increase in aggregate demand, wages will be driven up and output will return to its full employment level, meaning the natural rate of unemployment will prevail. Following a decrease in aggregate demand, wages will be forced down due to the excess supply of labor in labor markets, and therefore unemployment will once again return to the natural rate as firms hire more workers at the now discounted wage rates. That concludes the lesson on the long-run Phillips curve. Thanks again.